Hello, and thank you for joining us today and allowing us the opportunity to show you a little more about the medical device regulatory process in Europe. Over the next few modules, we'll take a look at key aspects involved in bringing your medical device to market. Let's get started. Here's what we'll cover in this series. First, we'll take a brief look at the overall regulatory framework. Then we'll move into how to classify your device, followed by quality management system requirements. And then technical file preparation. We'll also cover in-country representation, along with other parties involved in the process. And finally, we'll discuss those last steps needed to bring your device to market. You can use the thumbnails to skip around between topics if desired, or just let them run in sequence. Let's get started. One of the key advantages of marketing in Europe is that once you have CE marking, you can market your product in 32 European countries. All medical devices in Europe must undergo a harmonized approval process resulting in a CE marking. The European Commission creates legislation telling companies how to comply and each European country has a competent authority to enforce the legislation. The EU has three primary medical device directives, including one for general medical devices, one for active implantable devices, and one for in vitro diagnostic devices. This slidecast focuses on Directive 93-42-EEC for general medical devices. Although there are many parties involved in the regulatory process, we're going to focus on these primary entities manufacturers, competent authorities, authorized representatives, and notified bodies. The manufacturer is typically you, the party responsible for the design, manufacturing, packaging, and labeling under that entity's name. They ultimately take regulatory responsibility and are identified on the label. The competent authority is the EU equivalent of the US FDA. They enforce the medical device directives at the national level. It's important to understand that there are nuances to each competent authority's enforcement of the medical device directive provisions. Authorized representatives are regulatory liaisons between the manufacturer and competent authority. They're required for any company that does not have a location within the EU. We'll cover this in more detail later. Notified bodies are entities authorized to audit a manufacturer's quality system and regulatory documentation. Their primary function is to verify compliance to the medical device directives and to issue CE marking and ISO 13485 certificates. We'll discuss notified bodies in a later module. The entire process of bringing your medical device to market in the EU can be summed up in about eight steps, all of which are covered in later modules within this course. It's very important to note that some of these steps happen simultaneously or not at all depending on various factors. Assuming you know which directive applies to your device, the first step is to determine device classification. Once you've determined classification, you'll know the steps required to CE marking. If you don't already have a quality management system in place, you'll need to get one. This can take about six months or longer. Most companies apply the ISO 13485 standard to achieve QMS compliance. Next, you'll prepare a technical file. This is a dossier which details information about your product and provides proof of compliance with applicable requirements. If you don't have an office in the EU, you'll need to appoint a regulatory liaison known as an authorized representative. The next step involves passing an audit conducted by a notified body. The audit covers your quality system as well as your technical file. Upon successful completion of the audit, your notified body will issue you your certificates. All Class 1 devices are required to be registered. Some competent authorities require Class 2 and Class 3 devices to be registered as well. The last step is to sign your Declaration of Conformity. In this introductory module, we learned how the medical device directives are the main legislation in Europe used in the CE marking process and that all medical devices require CE marking. We also know that notified bodies audit your company for compliance and report their findings to the governing body the competent authorities. The next section delves a little bit deeper into the device classification process. 